Uh, call this meeting of Ohio County Fiscal Court to order at 5 o'clock on June the 11th, 2019. We'll ask Jason Bullock to lead us in a prayer and a pledge to the flag. Thank you, please. Dear Lord, we just love you. We just thank you for the blessings of life you've given us. We thank you for the day we have today. We just ask that you continue to be with Ohio County's residents. We ask that you bless them and them, be with them in their time of needs and struggles if they have those. Dear Lord, we just ask that you be with the court today, that you would uh, be with us. Dear Lord, in every decision we bring, that we have uh, prayerful consideration and thought before we make answers, that dear Lord, they will be uh, good to the county and uh, bless the county, dear Lord. Dear Lord, we just thank you again for uh, the place we live, the people here. Uh, just be with them and thank you for everything you've done for us. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. <coughs> Chase said. Uh, gentlemen, before you, you have the uh, minutes of the May 28th meeting. Uh, I need a motion to approve that. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Did you get them? Uh, and then, uh, is there any discussions, corrections, or additions to the minutes? Being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, post like sign. Oh, she carries. Before you, you have the bills, claims, payments, and transfers. Uh, I need a motion to approve those. No late list, right? Yes. Yes, including late list. So moved. Motion by Larry Cam. Second. Second by Jason Bullock. Uh, any discussion? Discussion on the bills, claims, payments, and transfers. Yeah, Being none, right, roll call. Hang on. I was oh. just looking at this one time that I hadn't seen yet. Okay. I have one, Judge. I have a question. Okay. And on the uh, tourism, Rosine Monsieur, Rosine Museum operating expense and tourism, phone bills for less than a hundred and some dollars. Mr. Chief, yeah. asking for reimbursement. Uh, they have, not an internet, they have some kind of special line out there that the tourism pays the bill. Start the museum? Yes. All their operations at the museum. Yeah, they operate out there. Yeah. Yeah. The tourism region would pay it. She's asking for reimbursement. Which was in her budget? Hey. Yeah. yeah. We, we have a question here, too. On, on the $3,124 Kentucky ASAP program for the drug deactivation systems? Uh huh. That, that is a pass through um, with a fiscal agent for the Kentucky ASAP. That's what I thought I thought we were going to do. That. So we receive grant money and we hold it until they expend it. This is a fiscal agent. Any further discussion or questions? Okay, now let's roll call. Bullock? Yes. Barnes? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Count? Yes. Morhew? Yes. Small. Yes. yes. <laughs> that was like. <laughs> um, uh, Treasurer gave us some kind of a report, a financial statement. We need to recognize that she gave it to us and Make our motion. get motion a second. Yeah. Joe and Sam. Okay, I'll take it. Okay, uh, I'll make a motion to accept the clerk. Okay. okay, let's vote on the Okay. Hey, <laughs> just a second. Okay. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like saying, motion carried. Now the clerks. Go Jason. I'll make a motion to accept the clerk. You know, financial. And second by Joe Barnes. Jake's book, Joe Barnes. Got him? Yeah. Uh, any discussion or questions for the clerk? Being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carried. Next, uh, Commissioner Tomlin couldn't make it after we put him on the agenda here, but uh, 
he has a worthy representative. Uh, uh, Mark Welch. Mr. Mark Welch. I started calling him Gray Welch. No, that's okay. Uh, I'm not going to be as quick as your, your first five items, but I have, do have some good news uh, to share with the court. And uh, with your indulgence, I'd like to read at, at least part of a letter uh, addressed to you from uh, Gray Tomlin, who's the commissioner. He begins talking about uh, economic development efforts of the, uh, the governor. Um, m mentions in the letter, and I've heard the governor say this several times, that he wants the, uh, the governors of other states surrounding Kentucky to uh, wake up and ask, how come all of our kids are going to Kentucky to work? So, our job, Gray begins, our job in the transportation cabinet is to help the governor's vision come to fruition. In order to continue our economic success and development, we must have a strong infrastructure. You have limited funding at the county level, and we have limited funding at the state level. That is why Governor Bevan has been adamant that we work with you and other local officials and communities across the Commonwealth to assess and prioritize infrastructure needs. He wants us to look through the lens you look through every day and he wants us to continue to build and strengthen our relationship with the Ohio County community. Today, the citizens of Ohio County see the fruits of the working relationship established between their county officials and state officials in Frankfurt. As part of Governor Matt Bevan's commitment to have the Kentucky Transportation Cabinet work with local officials to prioritize transportation infrastructure projects and increase economic opportunity across the Commonwealth, the Kentucky Transportation Cabinet is pleased to announce $302,887 in discretionary funds have been awarded to Ohio County for vital resurfacing work on Hamlin Chapel, Bald Knob, and Horace Martin Luke Roads. Judge Johnston and members of the Fiscal Court, you have every reason to be optimistic about the future of Ohio County and the Commonwealth of Kentucky. I know you will continue to work hard every day to make Ohio County the best it can be. And I guarantee you Governor Bevan will continue to fight every day to bring even more e economic success to our great Commonwealth. I appreciate the partnership we have and look forward to working with you again in the near future. Sincerely, Gray Tomlin, Commissioner, Department of Rural and Municipal Aid. So congratulations. Thank you. And I believe this brings, uh, you and I were discussing the yes. total discretionary award to probably over 700000 for the year. Yes. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah. So great news. Happy yeah. to share. Yeah. Thank you, Bart. And, uh, and just for the record, Mark has ridden over all these roads plus others. He's, he's uh, done them. And, uh, and we really appreciate him doing it because he also, as we were riding, he indulged me on telling him Bill Monroe stories and singing little pieces of several of his songs too. Did you so, yeah. no, but he sent me. Oh. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that made the bumps uh, not as bad. I hope. Judge, Did yes, anybody sir? have any questions for me? <coughs> when will these road to be blacked up? Right away. We're working. We should get the resolution for the special call meeting we're going to have. And then the contracts within a month. I, I talked to our office today. The, the MOA will be sent out either today or tomorrow. You should receive it soon. Okay. You'll need to do your business, right. sign it, send it back. And See, quicker than I said, you, you can begin what, work. We'll have to wait on Scott. He's probably the one way. Well, we're hoping to get him before he leaves here. He's doing some jobs for the state. We're hoping to get him while he's still here. Any other questions? Oh, thank you very much. Thank well, you. Yeah, Thanks thank for you. the good news. Sure. Yeah, we appreciate it and uh, appreciate everything you do. Uh, Mark's been really accept, uh, accessible to me. Anytime I need to call him, he's right there. Uh, also, I want to introduce to you Rebecca Rittenhouse. She's from the governor's office. She came here to hear the good news too and make sure that Mark said it right. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, anyway, we're, we're tickled to death with this great news. Uh, Thank, you. Thank you. Our next item of business is the second reading of the budget. Uh, and I'm going to leave it open for a motion to accept the revised uh, 
budget that we did today with those amendments. If not, I would I will present the old one the way it was read. But if I can get a motion on this one from Dave. So the CPI is in there, correct? Yes, sir. Will you make will, I will make the motion. Motion by Larry Morphew. I'll second. Second by Joe Barnes. Any discussion? Any discussion? Being none. Miranda. Bullock? Yes. Barnes? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Cam? Yes. Morphew? Yes. Small? Yes. Okay. The budget, the second reading is done. And that's huge. I want to thank all of you for the work you've done in it. Uh, all of you have. I really appreciate it. We've, uh, the, the, if for the audience, the budget process here is the toughest thing we do all year. Uh, it's, a, it's the hardest thing we do. Uh, our treasurer plays a little role in it. I'm kidding. She does a lot of work in it. Uh, and uh, the masters ought to do this. Judge. Yes, sir. I just want to say I voted against it last time, but what I asked for was added, so I voted for it. Good. And made the motion for it. I appreciate it. So did Joe. So that's the way it works. That's that's the way the sausage is made. And so uh, I'm really proud of it. Uh, the admin code, uh, the admin code, the second reading of that. No, is it first or second reading? The second. second reading of the admin code ordinance that y'all passed the last meeting. Uh, yes, second reading. Do I have a motion to approve that? So motion. Motion by Larry Morphew. Second. Second by Joe Barnes. Uh, go ahead and roll call. Pull up. Yes. Barnes. Yes. Johnson. Yes. Morphew. Yes. Small. Yes. Okay, that passed. Uh, let me see if our guest is in the hall because he was coming to go into closed session with us. He was here. We've done spoke with him. Yeah, if he is, we, uh, I have a mo. Uh, I'm, we're going to take them in first to Miranda, and then I will call him in. Uh, would, I need a motion to go into a short closed session. So move. Okay, let's go. Fine. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll wait for him. Bring him on in here so he'll be ready to come in. Yeah. It's a problem with putting the emergency management director in the charge of other things. Whenever there's an emergency, he's gone. Yeah. Is he leave? No. Yeah, he's on a wreck somewhere. Uh, uh, two, four. I just went blank. But when will you speak to Chase, or do I need to about uh, eight thousand dollars possibly coming out of his budget? Why don't you do? Why don't you do it? Make motion. Go back in session. We're in. We're back in the open session, and I will tell you that we conducted no business in that uh, closed session. We did listen to uh, some uh, personnel related uh, information. We had guests with us from uh, uh, from the uh, Department of Workforce Investment. So that's what we was in closed session for, but we didn't take care of any any business. So I want to let you know that. Next, I'm gonna call on Chase to uh, present us the OC loan. Good afternoon. While you're in closed session, I uh, came up and, and gave you a loan summary that should be for you. Uh, just to go down through, uh, well, first of all, uh, a couple weeks ago, the OC board met and they did approve this loan request. So I'm uh, here before you tonight to get final approval for this request. Uh, the borrower will be Zen Emporium LLC. Uh, that will be owned by Miss Leslie Hoover. Uh, a co-signer on the loan will be her partner, Wendell Edens. The amount that they're requesting from OCEDA is $25,000. Per our loan guidelines, we only do 50% of a project cost, so the project cost is $50,000. The other $25,000 will be participated by Citizens Bank. Uh, the intent uh, of the request is to purchase a building in downtown Beaverdam to operate a, a yoga studio, uh, a spa, and also sell uh -huh, essential you've been and holistic health items. 
use of the funds, 43,000 will be for the purchase of the building, 4,000 for the salt spas and various supplies, $1,000 for their oil inventory, 1,500 for yoga supplies, and $500 for working capital. I'll skip on down to the collateral discussion. Um, we've agreed on these terms with Citizens Bank, and uh, there, there is 15 acres of unencumbered property on Broadway Road that we will have a first mortgage on, and then we will take a second mortgage behind Citizens Bank on the, the property that is being purchased. And then we'll also have personal guarantees from each of the borrowers. 15 acres on Rob Boy, do we have an appraisal or anything? What's the value? In the farm ground. Oh, so. Yeah, there's, uh, the majority of it is tillable ground. And so in board discussion, it, you know, that, that right there is really it's more than that. To yeah. cover our you know, portion of the loan. Okay. Chase, I want to commend you for getting the first mortgage on the, uh, on the acres on Rob Roy Road. Thank you. Um, Leslie Hoover is a retired school teacher, so, uh, and she's been practicing and instructing at House of Yoga for a couple of years at Beaver Dam. She just wanted to start her own place, and she's also receiving instruction and seeking certification uh, to teach a new, or I don't guess it's new, but a different type of yoga that currently is an option in the area. And the other co-signer, Wendell Eans, has been an older truck driver for 11 years, so stable income there. Uh, I won't discuss uh, their specific financial situation in the open meeting, but you can see down there on the bottom line of the summary of financial statements that there is a very comfortable debt service coverage ratio of 1.93. The primary source of repayment is the income from the business operation. Secondary source of repayment will be disposable income or liquidation of assets upon default if necessary. And then you have your strengths and weaknesses there. That I did upon so that's the summary. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. Any questions? No, I, I make a motion that we accept a loan agreement. Motion by Sam Small. I will second that. Second by Larry Cam. Any discussion or questions? I just Before you vote, I do believe if Miranda were here that she would ask that you include in the motion to uh, authorize Andrew. I'll authorize Ann to write the check. As soon as she gets back here, we need to recap the. Why don't you write the motion for her and give it to her that passed? Yeah. Chase, the motion we accept this agreement and for the treasurer to write the check on required. Motion just passed on the Sam Small and Larry Cam. Second it. And Chase is going to give you the motion. It's where Paisley Pig used to be. It's in between where Modern Woodman currently are and the main place of marketplace. Yeah. Yeah, I know some of these guys have been looking for a yoga studio for a long time, so it's going to be really good. Chase, you know I've always had problems with second mortgages, and I, again, I want to commend you on Oceda having the first mortgage because that, that leaves it at the helm if, yeah. if, if, if the worst comes to happen. Went out there and got an extra, you know, kind of outside the box and found something else to do a first mortgage on. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're lucky to have, you know, not everybody has that type of collateral that they yeah. can offer. Uh, it's good. I like this. Yeah. And, uh, we fixed the vote, but can you uh, meet with the after? Can you stay till this meeting's over? I don't think it's going to be all that long, and talk be with Larry Cam. I need to ask. I need to ask you a question over some. Maybe yeah, I was hoping to make it to the Hartford Beaver Dam uh, planning and zoning meeting. Okay, it, it, Judge, can you give, give me about the five minutes yeah. outside? Yeah, we're going to get a recess just a second for. Uh, oh, don't talk to for uh, Larry. To talk to Chase okay. out in the hall. Let's vote for vote vote on this. Vote. Vote. Oh, I'm sorry. Vote. Yes. Vote. He can vote yes. Okay. Everybody else good? Roll call. <laughs> yes. Bullock, yes. Barnes. Yes. Johnson. Yes. Pam. Morphew. Yes. Small. Yes. Okay. Pass. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, like I said, we're sort of in a little holding pattern here just for a second. Um, I don't think our meeting will be a lot longer because we've got a uh, this title transfer thing down here. It's on the agenda. We're not going to do. And. Uh, the jailer's report's going to be quick, so I think we're going to do real well. We'll do that. Yeah. Well, these folks here at Larry's district keep going to do saying. Anybody else got anything to bring to the court? We're it's on the it's uh, it's up here in a minute. Uh, What's he saying? Safe bid. I don't know. I think we could do that. Uh, let's go ahead and do that. Opening the bid for the safe in the sheriff's office. 
You want to do that and read it out loud? Huh? Yeah. It's the safe in the sheriff's office. Yeah. One bid. Yes. One bid. Yes. Uh, the bidder was Keith Dale, and his bid was five hundred dollars on the safe. Well, I'll tell you what, well, I don't think we'll need Larry's boat to uh, prove that. I'll move that we approve Keith Dale's. Motion by Jason. And it's it's on the condition of the execution. I've talked to Keith a little bit about the waiver okay. of liability. Just as long as he knew about it. He has to move it too, right? Yeah, he has, oh, yeah. <clears throat> he has to move it and accept any damage if you call. You second? Second by Larry Morphew. And, and as y'all heard in the discussion, he is uh, responsible for moving it. And and uh, and and if he uh, if he scours the steps up getting it down there, I'm gonna tie it around his back and throw him in the river. So that with that understood, we can't really vote on that right now though because I'd like to take that language out. Please, <laughs> how much that thing weigh? Two thousand pounds. Uh, to totally, he's gonna disassemble. He's gonna take the doors off, and that's gonna make it. Within the weight limit that the uh, elevator will take. <laughs> Paul, Paul, are you guys, what are you guys going to present? Want to say something? About the zoning? Yeah, I think we're all here kind of a follow up on the planning zoning request. Well, that is what the discussion in the hall is about. Okay. You want to come up and say something or present anything? We have a motion on the floor. Yeah. I think, I think with Larry out, I think we can go ahead and vote on it. All right. On favor, say aye. 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 Post like sign. Keith, you own us. You own that safe. Well, then I can come up and address the same issue as you did last time. Yeah, we sold Keith Dale safe for five hundred dollars. What's that? I figured for sure when he knew nobody else was bidding, he'd lowball us, but he didn't. Uh, just to address the court, uh, several of us here. Uh, Paul and George and Neil are back on the planning and zoning just to kind of discuss again the comprehensive plan and the cost of that. Um, I've talked to Larry and I think there are a few questions there. Again, this is just to update our comp plan, which is you know considerably out of date. Yeah. Uh, it's not to not to actually do anything with zoning itself, expanding the boundaries or anything. It's just actually kind of the idea of that we have to follow. Well, would you tell us the benefit to the county and why? I mean, yes. we don't go out. We're not playing the zoning, but because you guys are inside Ohio County. Can you hit me? Can you hit me? No. It's actually, it's a point uh, to uh, here in the middle of the city. And planning is only itself. When the Board of Adjustments and the Zoning Commission, it helps identify a few thousand, a few thousand dollars left over or something like that. And she said it didn't matter to her, even if it was 2,000, 2,000. I think they can do eight or nothing. I think we do eight. So, if I have to. was the last time any major updates were done. It um, it fell in line with what the world was then, and here we are, 30 years later, and we don't have certain things like we don't have um, our industry uh, parameters are not built out. There's hardly anything regarding technology. There's hardly anything regarding broadband. There's hardly anything regarding some of the new commercial ventures that you're seeing coming into our county. So when they come to these cities and they say, "Hey, we want to do something with you," we're having a hard time rezoning areas in order to allow them to do that. So we have to update our plan and do a, a full comprehensive update in order to be able to work with these entities so that we can actually get more growth for the county. Terry, uh, I, uh, I uh, polled the court while we were in the uh, road department meeting, and uh, it was the consensus of the court that at the end of this physical year, which is the last of this month, uh, we will look if there's any monies uh, left over, maybe from different departments that we might be, and I'm not promising anything, but uh, we'll look at see where the see where we're at on our monies, and there's a possibility. Uh, so after after the consensus of the court was that we're going to wait till then and and see if there's any monies available, and then we'll go from there. And, and I appreciate that, and I'll say on behalf of planning and zoning, we did ask if the court could help alleviate some of the city's burden. I think it was a little around the eight thousand mark. Right. But obviously, you know, some is better than none. Yeah. Yeah. And, and at this particular stage, and I just do want to remind the court that 
this isn't the only cost the city are going to incur. No. Once the plan is over, the cities themselves have to go back and actually do the rezoning. Implement them. That's going to be a significant cost yes. as well. So yeah. we are asking the county to help us yeah. a little bit just to yes. get plan up today. And I paste and I paste it on twenty four. Yeah. Twenty five. What what did that actually consist in? What's, that, what's the major cost in that? We would actually be contracting with Brad and their department that actually does this day to day in and out. And what they're going to do is they're going to sit down. You have to have so many meetings. You have to have notice and comment periods. You have to be able to identify your goals and objectives and update that. Um, they'll be able to look at the surrounding industries. And we'll work with uh, Chase and his group with Alcita. We'll be able to work with uh, other counties and find out what's coming in, how we want to focus our growth moving forward in the future. And we have to implement all of that and have the and have the uh, necessary. Uh, public hearings and things of that nature. So it is pretty comprehensive. So grads can do this? Yes, they're going to assist. So, uh, so it's mainly cost for grads to do it? Yes, yes. It's, and we had talked about uh, at the last planning and zoning meeting, you know, what we could do ourselves. And the struggle here is even with grads assistance to get everything done, we're probably looking at a minimum of a year to get it all completely knocked out. Whereas if we tried to do it on our own terms, I don't know that it would be quite as comprehensive and just the learning curve itself would probably take an excess of two to three years. What, is, what exactly is grad's cost? It's the contract, I don't have that right with me right this moment, okay. uh, but it's, it's right around 25. 25, okay. Is this a stepping stone to extend out in the county the planning zone? No, this is just the comprehensive plan. This is literally just kind of for lack of better terms, the planning and zoning bible to say you can only do this and what you can. It has nothing to do with zoning the actual uh, area. And right now, you can ask Neil he actually sits on the commission. There's been no discussion about expanding any boundaries. It's just for the it's just to be able to update the plan to say these are the parameters in which you can zone areas. And the I'm city. a no vote for countywide planning and zoning. Just uh, curiosity, I, I saw there was a flood zone, it showed flood zone maps and stuff in there. Will those be updated? Is that something? Or is that, yeah, that could mean, help alleviate people when they come into business to have insurance? There's a lot of people that have a lot of issues in the downtown area, but there are flood zones or indications that aren't actually flood zones. If we were to have that effect on planning and zoning mapping, but after we do the plan, we could probably well, look at that. But right now, this is just the plan to say, okay, well, this is what we want to do as our two cities so that we can actually go out and encourage this growth. Yeah, that's actually done by the state. Yeah, that has nothing to do with planning and zoning. It's just, I think what Jason's asking is whether or not we would take into consideration that. We do have a lot of issues because there are some. Especially in Beaverdam, you know, yeah. we'll yeah. drop some prices. Yeah, and I think Hartford Outfarms and all We've that. We've had that. to do a lot of surveying in the past just to prove yeah. that. But this We're is long primarily long. just to be able to identify right. the growth centers. Okay. Uh, for the record, I definitely want to do it. And I'm going to try every way in the world. Well, I appreciate it. And I know, I know you all normally don't see us unless anybody's coming to ask for money. But honestly, there's a lot of people working behind the scenes that are trying to do some things in the communities. And this is one of them. Absolutely. Okay. I agree. And uh, Rick, we do have two mayors here, and I'm sure that they're very much interested in this too, which yeah. is a big deal. You well, have to be down with Hartford Values, uh, so I mean, they come through for you guys. They help us out a lot. If you have any questions, you're welcome to call me personally. I, I talked to Larry. Uh, I'm staying here to get hold of me. We're always happy to talk to him. Uh, so if you have any questions, you know how to get a hold of me, call her at me. Because I know you judge, you appoint a both of them. But uh, yeah. Nancy's always available too. I think she's out of public hearing right now. We're hoping she to is. have some more growth. And we're actually having to get really creative with this hearing that she's at today right. because of our comp plan. So this would really open up right. Economic development uses uh, planning and zoning uh, guidelines all the time in their recruitment. It's really important to them. I think you have to be a little bit careful uh, about uh, maybe taking it a step too far before Owensboro did and we... <laughs> yes, and that's actually part of the problem that we're running into is because we're so outdated. In in the essence of where Owensboro has kind of planned themselves to death to where yeah. they've knocked some True. things out, we're so vague and we're so non-existent to certain sectors that we're knocking ourselves out because we can't alleviate right. um, and can't accommodate what they're wanting. So this is going to give us a way to actually work. Our goal is to work with people. Instead of saying no, we want to say, okay, let's find a way to mm -hmm. say yes. That's true. Yeah. Well, if it would just help a couple of businesses, that's going to be Yes, that's it. Yeah. Yes. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Thank I do. You. And I appreciate all of you that came on that behalf. Uh, Neil Grant, there's a, he doesn't look near that old. But he graduated from high school with me 50 years ago. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, he's 12, he said. Uh, and oddly enough, we had a reunion a few years ago, and I was amazed how some of the folks looked old in there. But 
It, it, some, yeah. of, some of them did. <laughs> yeah, some did. But anyway, thank you all for coming. Like I said, uh, I'm for it and we're going to try to do everything we can to make that happen. Uh, next we have a capitalization policy. Who's got that to present? And, and uh, It's just raising our... Uh, threshold on vehicles or equipment of 30,000 okay. to 20 to 30. And that's what you just did in the budget changes. So I to have, have this, I have to have a threshold of what I have to list to capitalize on my do, do I have a motion to accept the new capitalization policy? So moved. Motion by Larry Morphew. Second by Sam Small. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like sign. Motion carries. Ripster, you're on. What's this jail guy want? <laughs> Come on, Rip. Take a guess. Come on down. I think you got a check for us. Here. Okay. What the? Well, next time again, you know where I'm from, I've got issues. We're running out of trouble, it's not trouble, but my part-time people are getting a little overtime, 22 hours is what they're supposed to get. But with the mandate, three, hours, three guys per shift, it's kind of hit us pretty good. And they've gone over 22 hours, 1, 29, 30. I mean, we just got to have people there, and we're limited to having full-times. I mean, we have as many part-time as one, as we see I've gone to a lot of people so far. Right now it's come to seventeen thousand. I think the total is right. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. No bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've been paying first of July. Uh, <laughs> so is it a new? When did that rule come out about the main day last year? Last year. This is our first year that we're actually seeing what's going to happen. So it's been go coming up about all year, and now you just come up short. And we actually not having three for the shift. Like sometimes, most of the time, I try to buy my farm deal season rules. But like last week, I've had five people had they go in part time simply for the fact that they're all scared to the work three days that week, and they only got one job, and they only works one day. And if that other job calls, well, they call my people. So they won't be there. Their priority is the other job. Now I gotta find people to work spot because we're open, we're not shut down. So that's where my dilemma's at. I suppose it's a lot cheaper for part time help than it is overtime help, yeah. you know. Believe me, I don't like coming up here and asking for money all the time. It's gotta be done. Pretty good. Yeah. Um Kind of, where's, where's this, where would this money come from? Um, at the end of the fiscal year, you know, when we have that money left over. We were just talking about earlier. Yeah. We, you guys wisely put $20,000 in payroll reserves for things such as this. Uh, right now, the balance in there is on your financial statement. Is $18,690. I'm surprised this yeah. wasn't 18000 No. Yeah. <laughs> right now. But that's not that's not what we're predicting well, all the way to the end of July. I mean, that, 1st of July, right? These, the $17,000 is in bills sent to us from the state. And that's what we're going to be using to pay the bills for the next couple of months. So they sent us a bill. And this not represents not several months, don't it? Yes. I think there's three people are not even currently employed, are they? No, and my cook retired for the month. And instead of hiring a full-time cook, I put it back to a part-time cook so I can put the full-time employee on the floor. And that's going to help us quite a bit. Yes, that'll relieve a lot of the... Is it, the state Rip, do you have a problem getting part-time help? Uh, is that Canada, the reason you're working the part time is more hours? It's exactly would be better off if you just hired another part time employee. Of course, every employee you're short exactly what they but they keep quitting. Yeah. You've got a part -time What's your qualification? Do they have to go to school? No. But it takes a while. They don't send it right then. Right. It takes a while for them to catch it. I've seen where Rip's, uh, since he's cooked with, he's lost a little weight.
Let's, I hate seeing that. Let me pass that down to him. Here you go. Well, you know, we take the uh, rips overtime overages out of the uh, reserve. Well, that's not reserve. What, what was that? that? What was that account? Payroll reserve. Payroll reserve. Yeah. Second. I'll second that motion. You got a motion and second. You got. I got second and two. Got to pay you bills. Take what you want. Yep. No. Okay, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed right. like sign. We gotta pay it, so. Motion carries. See you next year, Rip. Welcome. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Rip. Uh, hey, Rip. One question. Have we, on next year's budget, was that included, was anything included for the extra time that we're gonna have to have for next year? I'm hoping that we won't run into this one. The thing with these part time cook to full time, I think. It's mainly full -time. due to the people quitting. No, you can't keep enough help. Having, having to get the ones that he's already worked and to cover the, 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 the next thing we have is we'd advertise for a uh, animal control truck. And uh, I hadn't seen the bid to now. We only got one. One bid. I'm going to ask Larry Cowan to open it and read it. Does. Yeah. I think so. That works. This is from Moore Ford, Mercury, Chrysler, Dodge, and Jeep. Uh, it says I have included two units in my bid proposals. First is a nineteen, a two thousand nineteen Ford F one fifty four by four super cab. White vinyl interior, 3.3 liter engine, automatic transmission, and class 4 hitch. The price for this unit is $24,587.40. The second unit I am proposing is a 2019 Ram Quad Cab 4x4 automatic transmission, 3.6 liter engine, white in color, power equipment group, and is priced at $22,382. One's quite a bit cheaper than the other, isn't it? Yeah. Well, the Dodge is cheaper than the Ford. I mean, that, that goes without saying. Well, I'll read it no. again. Hey, read it again. What? Look again. I believe it's the other way around. No, no. No, the Ford is the Ford is uh, $24,547.40. Oh, okay. So I meant $22,382. Okay. So I guess we've got... You want to make a motion to accept the cheaper one? Yeah. Motion for Larry Where are we getting the money for this? This is co-severance money. From the uh, LGDF fund uh, line item. Well, eighteen thousand seven hundred of it is from there. The remaining would have to come out of some money that you all put back for capital improvements last year. You guys are just so them. smart putting all this money back. I'm so proud of you guys. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, how we thought of this? Hey, uh, also, so I which line item is it? Uh, the line item for the ambulance. Okay. The ambulance is way under one. Motion. Well, Larry, can I have second? We thought, second. We thought about that here yeah. the court. Second time. Yeah. I packed on the rest of that dump truck mm -hmm. and this. Okay. Yeah. You okay. know, I, while you're talking about dump trucks, can I just in, uh, inject something? You know, we've always taken our dump trucks and took them down in Alabama where they have the uh, sale, and I forget the name of the individuals that has the sale. Uh, if we put that, uh, do, are we obligated to do that, or can we put that on uh, .gov and, and sell it that way to start with to see if we have any takers? And if, if not, then well, our we're contract underneath that lease yeah. program. Uh, we, well, our contract to get them from Mac that's yeah, but, involved. But is our contract that we have to sell them down there at that particular sale? It is. Now, whether we can renegotiate a better contract, I don't know. But, but we yeah, always do pretty good, don't we? Well, yeah. the problem is it's about twelve thousand, ten dollars or $12,000 dollars time to clean up and, uh, and the commission that they charge for selling it. And uh, ten or $12,000, you could sell it cheaper at .gov than you... Sometimes uh, we've only been 1000 or 2000 but then there's been times we've been 10 and 12. Yeah, but we could make even more money on it, so... But the, I think what the problem is, because me, me and Keith, uh, Keith had talked about it, but we would actually have to buy one outright and then turn around and sell it after a year's work and see where we would actually be on Yeah, it. that'd certainly be an so option. It, it would be a little gamble to see how it worked yeah. out. And you could pay a minimum amount of interest and come out on it. We have paid for those trucks this year. 
That's what I was thinking that we paid for. We're no longer we're no longer borrowing the money, but we're still getting that special rate though. And we'll, you know, tithe, but, and pay for those and pay yeah. no interest. Well, I would think that if we paid the trucks, we were no longer under contract to, to send them down there. Yeah, I mean, we have voted. Yeah. Go roll call that. I'm sorry. Um, I'm sorry. But Judge, will you check into that and see I if certainly if we are under contract? And we could still take them down there, but I'm talking about putting no, them, putting them out there on the internet. And uh, we may, by not finding some anymore, we may be able to do that. Let's find yeah, that. Okay. 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 Yes. Barnes. Yes. Johnson. Yes. County. Yes. Morphew. Yes. Small. Yes. Okay. That and that. Okay. The title transfer. Let me tell you what that was. We're not going to be able to do that tonight, because. Like I said, Charlie went to an emergency somewhere and Justin's been working on it. What this is, is the sewer plant once one of our dump trucks was going to sail. And and under local uh, uh, government agreement, they can, uh, interlocal agreement, they can buy it for fair and market price. And Charlie and, and them both have had it appraised or uh, got the, and we was going to do that title transfer to them tonight. But Justin said we better wait till the special call meeting. Because we don't have enough of his information he needs. So who's, I was going who's, to, uh, who's looking at buying? It's, it's the sewer plant. Oh. Wastewater. Wastewater. Right. Judge, I do have one question on on the previous thing. So just whenever you... Animal control? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Get a chance, we can back up to that. No, go ahead. Let's do it before I do these two uh, test changes. Is that vehicle equipped the way we want it and everything? Uh, we yeah. No, he's got cages and stuff he can put in the back of it. Out of his own budget later, he may buy a camper shell for it. Okay. But as of now, he'll put the cages in the back and he'll go. Uh, um, next, I've got two, uh, one status change and one new hire. Uh, you want to hire, I mean, change the status of Charles Bullington, moving from the senior center to the road department as a seasonal equipment operator at twelve seventy five per hour, he'll start Monday or Sunday, the sixteenth of uh, nineteen. Uh, I need a roll call vote. Full up. Hang on, Renetta's. I got. What range did you say? Twelve twenty five. Twelve. Uh, it's twelve twenty five. I'm sorry. I read twelve seventy five. Yeah. It's somebody's writing. No, it's twelve twenty five. I'm sorry. Okay. Yes. Oh, yes. Bullock, Barnes, yes. Yes. Johnson, yes. Count, yes. Morphew, yes. Small. Yes. Okay. Next. Next, we have a new hire, seasonal, Bradley Kessinger, as a, a seasonal equipment operator, uh, twelve twenty-five an hour, uh, begin rate six sixteen nineteen as well. Roll call. Bullock, yes. Barnes. Yes. Johnson. Yes. Yes. Morphe. Yes. Small. Yes. Okay. We worked the sheriff's safe bid in ahead, so we're ready for committee reports. Are there any committee reports? Uh, you've already given your one there on the uh, planning zone. Planning zone. zone. Any other committee reports? Uh, what did I have to do under committee reports? You got me a list. These things. These two things. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, I need to make two library board appointments. Uh, John Cashon and Jennifer Porter. Hold on, hold on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do we accept both of them one time or do we want to do No, we can do them both at the time. Okay, Roka. I'll make the motion off for you. Second time. Bullock? Yes. Barnes? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Count? Yes. Morphew? Yes. Small? Okay. Be sure to get these two the back to this library thing and notify our local library both tomorrow, okay? Okay. Any, uh, what else? Oh, yeah, this. Okay. I wish Chase hadn't left. We have to, y'all have heard of Kentucky Wired. That's the internet thing that's coming through. We have to name a local uh, group to try to meet with them and try to hurry us up and get information that they can bring back to the court and all that. And I basically 
am doing this, which I'll give to you back to enter in a minute. I'm giving the task to OCEDA to study, gain the information, and help determine the best approach to take for the last mile broadband strategy, which will be up on us soon. As Kentucky Wired finishes the middle mile, fiber to the courthouse could be this fall or winter. So it's, I want, I'm tasking OCEDA with that. In other words, we're sort of passing on this uh, duty. Uh, so uh, that, I want that entered into the minute. And if any of you have any questions about the broadband, uh, Kenny Autry is actually uh, taking care of it from my office, part of what he do, he's doing. It. Uh, and it's actually going to happen. It's going to happen pretty quickly. The uh, Kentucky Ward was a lot of hype in the beginning, and nothing happened for years. Yes. And, yes. and uh, very frustrated. Our own governor, very frustrated with it, and he put his foot down and and kick some things around. We put a lot of money in it too. Yeah. And put some extra money in it. And uh, it's moving. It's moving big time heading this way. So we'll have some of it here for long. If any of you noticed the work on 231 where they changed all the light poles, Kennedy did, well, this to accommodate this. So that's, so a lot has been done. Oops, all ahead and that one. If there's no other committee reports, uh, let's go to uh, Let's go to uh, the master's comments. Sam Small. Uh, no, Jason Bullock. No, thank you. Joe Barnes. No, thank you. Uh, I, 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 you yeah, you do. Oh, what's that? You got guests. Yeah, what? You got guests here. Oh, yes. Right, yeah. uh, right. But, but I thought maybe since that would be, I might let, ask Larry Morphew first and then get back to you. Oh, no, okay. Okay, go ahead. Go well, ahead. Uh, Mr. and Ms. Haney here, Randy, and I'm sure they want to. Uh, enlighten the court on the, what's transpired so far with. Uh, yeah. I'll keep it as brief as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, just a little update. Uh, that jam has gotten so large since uh, you two saw it that actually, when the water was down one day about a week and a half ago, there was a coyote hunting on it. He was as surprised to see me as I was him. Yeah. But it's just getting worse and worse. I have been fortunate enough to have two, had two people from the Kentucky Division of Water out there. It was over a different problem. I have a neighbor that has rerouted Rocky Fork, and they're in the process of checking on that. But last Thursday, last Wednesday night, we got seven-tenths of an inch of rain. I stayed at the farm that night. Thursday, we got one and three eighths in about an hour. That's a lot of rain. Yeah. That's a lot of rain. Uh, the water came up so fast on Rocky Ford. I had two fields completely underwater, two 13, 14 acre fields underwater. But the water came completely over the Shreve Road Bridge. Yeah. There was this much refuge on top of it. So what I'm suggesting that I know there's talk of a new bridge, that'll be great when it happens, but I don't want to lose the one I've got. But I want, I have a daughter that lives at one end of Shreve Road with children. I have a son that lives at the other end of Shreve Road with children. We all use that bridge all the time. I'm hoping that maybe you guys can get your heads together Maybe we can tie this. This log jam is downriver from where Rocky Fork enters the river, and I feel like it's holding Rocky Fork up. It's causing me lots of trouble because that <coughs> water has to go past past this log jam. Uh, we have a very positive thing happen today. I got a call from someone with the, my wife took a call from the Corps of Engineers. This guy's talking like. He's pretty much coming over the other problem, but he's interested in the log jam. So I'll do whatever I can yeah. with him. I'll get that information yeah. to Charlie. Well, I told you, wife, to keep keep us updated, Judge, yeah. and myself as yeah, well. So Charlie as... was going to send somebody out to check that bridge. Uh, I'm sure it's probably all right, you know, but he was pretty concerned because yeah. it could have 
it could have uh, have you ever known they've been over that bridge because it's a small bridge no I really I, I really don't know so I, I can't if, recall if this thing is cut this log jam is causing the bridge to get water over it it might put us our dog in the fight yeah yeah, that's that's what I'm hoping. I, yeah. under, I I see you understand that, so yeah. that's all I want to get done. Yeah. Plus, I was when I saw the debris on the bridge, I was shocked because I've never seen that happen before. But if some car was on that bridge, when that water was shooting over it, they'd be in the creek. Yeah. And then we could have a fatality. We could have something going on because there's no rails or anything yeah. over that bridge you're there, going to go right into the creek there's a tremendous amount of watershed that, that comes down 3, rocky acres, yeah 3, yeah yeah my son said that that creek it dumps about 3800 acres yeah. of water so i mean yeah. and you know who knows what caused it yeah you know, i mean it was kind of an unprecedented way it came down and the fastness but i would sure hate to have a fatality or a major accident on that bridge, knowing that we've got a problem on it now. Yeah. Because there's a lot of kids, there's a lot of families that use that bridge. Yeah. That's a three road through there, you know what I mean? So it's not so like it's a dead I end. So it's, 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 a yeah. shortcut. it's a shortcut for a lot of people. Yeah. You know. yep. yeah, they use it to go from 54 to 992. That's true. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank uh, you. Anybody else in the general? The public got anything for the good of the body? If not, after one statement, we're going to uh, adjourn this meeting. And you don't have nothing. <laughs> yeah. uh, Jason, I'm, I'm wondering if uh, FEMA has mitigation grants available at times that if you can do something to prevent something mm -hmm. else from happening. Well, we're certainly. I wonder if we couldn't check into that. That's one of the things we'll certainly look into. Uh, good point. Again, I want to thank the uh, court tonight for passing the budget unanimously. Uh, and, uh, and like I said, I'm very proud of that. So with that said, this meeting's adjourned.